Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today we're gonna to be taking a look at this. This is the Crosley C10 turntable, and this is Crosley's biggest and best, not really biggest, it's the best unit that they have, and it's a phenomenal device, and the story behind it is very interesting. You are not gonna to wanna to miss this. This is Recordology. Okay, and here it is, the Crosley C10. As of the publication date of this video, this is their best of the best. This is the best that they have to offer, just like all other Crosleys and Audio-Technica units. The company itself doesn't produce these units, they resell them. In this case, it's from a company you might have heard of called Project, and they make fantastic products, and that's why it looks so different. Project is an Austrian company, and they are known for making fantastic products. So why would you want to buy the Crosley C10 instead of just buy the Project directly? Well, I can tell you right now on Amazon, link in the description below, you can get this for only $231, and that is definitely going to be cheaper than buying a Project turntable. The normal list price on this is $399. $9.95 and like I said $231.09 plus free shipping right now which is really cool okay so we are unboxing it and by the way trying to find an analog as to what project model this is the closest I can find is a project debut carbon although this unit that we're looking at right here has an aluminum tone arm and not the carbon fiber tone arm it's still awesome it's still going to work just as good it's just not going to be made of carbon fiber and i think that's really the only difference so here we are unpacking it this has the, some of the most bizarre packaging materials I've ever seen. This good sort of fabric wrap instead of plastic for most of the compartments. But looking in here, there's a lot of loose pieces, which is weird. Strange triangle piece. Here's the audio cable. The power supply is falling out of the box somehow. And it's a little bit more, you know, haphazard looking under here than I would expect. But this is what I found. Uh, it doesn't seem to have damaged anything. But let's go ahead and lift the turntable itself out and look underneath. More sort of strange random packing materials loose in here as well as those gray pieces there those are really cool those are like vacuum formed and typically I've been in the shipping business before and they have these things where you kind of crack them open and they expand to fit the package and I think that's what those are those are really good and really expensive so it's good to see that they took the time and money to do that and there's the platter I kind of wondered did I accidentally open this thing upside down but I don't think so it just is the way it is, so we'll take it as it comes. Now here are all the components laid out. I'm gonna go ahead and unpack the power supply, unpack the counterbalance, all that good stuff. Now the next thing I wanna do is show you this platter. It is super heavy, and I believe this is a steel platter. And it's interesting because you'll notice that there's no sub platter built into it. So it's just sort of a shell. And that's because the sub platter is attached to the plinth of the turntable itself via the main bearing. And I'll show you why in a minute. But let's go ahead and unpack this. You can see the famous Project tone arm there. As I stated before, this isn't a carbon fiber tone arm. This particular one is aluminum, but it should work just as good. And there is the sub platter really quickly and the dust cover here. You gotta take care of these because they're super scratch sensitive as we've talked about before. It just attaches to these poles right here and hinges up and out of the way. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you guys was the bottom of this unit. It's really interesting. This is an extremely simplistic device. One of the most striking things you're gonna see, three feet with felt pads, so there's only three points of contact. That's an ideal situation. Power switch on the bottom, connected straight to the power supply and motor, which is right there. Now you'll see through the grill here, there's a uh, project label on the bottom side of this massive, massive motor. Why is it such a big motor? The reason why it's a big motor is because you want that stability and that higher torque. Now here's the sub platter and it fits into this bearing right here in the plinth. And man, this is amazing. Look at it slowly descend and it's actually springy when you push it down. And that's purely due to the tight fit and the air underneath that little spindle. Very interesting. Here is the motor pulley. It is a two-step pulley, meaning that there's two cogs on there, one for 33 and a third, and one for 45. That means that you will need to move the belt when you want to change speeds, but it's actually not that big of a deal. I'll show you in a minute. Here's the Ortifon OM5E that it shipped with, the little cover for it did pop off in transit, and a little bread tie here, twisty tie, 
holding the tone arm down to the rest. The rest and sort of the base of the tone arm assembly is plastic. However, the cueing lever and other elements are metal. And it does feel like it's put together really, really well. Spinning it around a little bit here so we can see different sides of it. We see a weird little hook thing and I'll show you what that does in a minute. This is pretty neat. It's kind of a feature you'll see on high end turntables. But overall, the whole assembly here, the whole gimbal assembly seems to be really well constructed. This is a very simple device. So looking under here, you see this is the power supply. There's one of the feet and here's the audio cable. It is permanently attached. However, the audio cables do seem really high quality, probably gold plated tips. And you can see there's even a grounding wire to connect to your preamp. This is going to require an external preamp, by the way. So you can't connect this straight to a stereo. You need that preamp. You can't connect it directly to the speakers either without that preamp. Now what's included here? We get a very cheap, surprisingly, 45 RPM adapter. Here's the little key to uh, move the belt from one cog to the other without having to touch it, and then a little adapter for putting on new head shells. Here's the counterbalance weight, we'll put that on in a minute, and the belt, which has a nifty project logo on it. However, I completely missed that and put it upside down, doesn't matter. They also include a cartridge alignment protractor, which is really neat, and we've talked about how to do that in other videos, so I'm not gonna go over it again. Keep the manual, it's gonna have a lot of good information in there. It'll help you set up the turntable. This turntable does require a little bit of setup because it's got a fully manual counterbalance adjustment as well as you need to put the belt on, you need to set the anti-skate and all that good stuff. All right, so how do you change speeds? You take the platter off and then you move the belt from one cog to the other. The top cog, the smaller one, is for 33, and the bigger one on the bottom is for 45. And it's really simple as that, you guys. You can use your fingers, it's not gonna damage anything. Some people get a little weird about touching belts, so they give you this little plastic thing to adjust it with. Here is the platter mat, and this must be the world's thinnest slice of felt completely, completely cheap piece of felt. You definitely want to upgrade that as well. Again, changing speeds is really easy, guys. It's no big deal. This allows it to use a one-speed motor, which will be more precise and require a lot less electronics. So that's something to consider. I think that's a very good feature. Okay, let's go ahead and put on the counterbalance. You're gonna notice the markings on this counterbalance are not what you're used to. This turntable uses a different scale. 1 mn equals 0 0.01 grams. So we're gonna set this to 17.5 mn once we get it balanced. So the first thing, balance the tone arm. Then we're gonna go ahead, put it back in the rest. And then we're gonna take that scale, just the front piece, that little plastic front edge, and we're gonna reset it to zero. Since we know what zero is, our floating point, then we're gonna apply that 17.5 mn of down pressure. Of course, that's completely dependent on the cartridge, the OM5E from Ortifon, great entry-level cartridge. It's an elliptical cartridge. This is what it requires. Now we're gonna do the anti-skate, which unlike other units that use just a simple little knob and all the magic happens under the platter, under the plinth. This one goes right above. This is the best way to do it. Basically, you just attach it to that second position on the back pole there, and then take the filament that's attached to the weight and hang it over that hook so it's out of the way. That's a unique way to do it compared to a lot of the other ones we've seen, but it's really cool. You'll definitely be the coolest kid on the block with this turntable. And also, as I said before, you do have an alignment protractor. No need to adjust this cartridge. It's been factory aligned for your pleasure. Look at that platter mat, you guys. That is fresh out of the package and it already looks 50 years old. It's just a cheap, thin piece of felt. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a sound test. I decided to record the sound ambiently using a stereo microphone. So it should give you good channel separation and allow you to hear the room acoustics as well. Obviously the direct feed of this would be one way to do it, though I decided to do it a little bit differently this time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a little music from the Crosley C10.
sounds fantastic. It's a great turntable, highly recommended and very simple. There's a motor to spin the platter. There's voltage applied to the cartridge, which is just a transducer. It changes mechanical information into electrical information. And that's about it. It's simple, it's high quality, and I would absolutely recommend this, you guys. All right, guys, and that's gonna do it for today. If you wanna get your hands on the fabulous Crosley C10, click on the link in the description below. Let me know your thoughts on this turntable. What do you guys think of it? What's your opinions? I think it's a phenomenal product and I'm really looking forward to seeing what Crosley's got coming up because they know that people, on one hand, they like the retro, they like the entry level, and for a lot of us, that's really the only way we can get into vinyl because it's not like we have a lot of extra cash lying around or we can buy expensive turntables. But on the other hand, you have the enthusiasts that really want to invest that money into a very nice setup. Now, not a lot of us can do that, but for those that can, they're really looking for high quality parts, components, materials, and it's interesting to see Crossley get into that side of the market as well. I think it's a smart move, and this is a great product, you guys. I would highly recommend it. All right, but that's gonna do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Happy record listening, and we'll catch you next time.